what do you know about sugar cane? Contain a lot of sugar. Yeah, yeah. Rum? Yeah, you can produce rum. Uh, cachaça in Brazil. Here in Costa Rica, we produce guaro. Have you ever heard something about guaro before? Guaro? No. 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 Guaro is actually a shuriken liquor, so it's the one that we produce here in Costa Rica. It's quite, quite traditional. So you can also produce methanol for cars in Brazil. Cuba they produce a lot of methanol. Uh, the shuriken is original from India. It's in the bamboo family, so that's why it looks like bamboo. It's quite similar. But usually grow faster in the lowlands, in warmer places. At least here in Monte Verde, we um, are just going to let the shuriken grow by itself. You sometimes can cut the plant into small pieces and lay those pieces in the ground horizontally. So the shuriken eventually will sprout from each frame. You can notice that there are some little joints, some little shurikens growing, for example, from here. So if you just cut this into small pieces and lay those pieces in the ground, we'll be ready to be harvested in usually a year and a half. Okay. It's actually too slow because of the cold weather. But you can also let it grow by itself. So the shuriken that grows directly from here, from the root system, uh, will be ready to be harvested in usually 8 to 10 months, so grow faster. That's the reason why uh, here most of the shuriken plants actually are just growing in groups, not in lines. So the right time to harvest it is when it's in the blooming season, when you see the flowers. So, for example now, we can see some flowers actually, that's something that we call berolis. That's a Spanish word for the flower, shuriken flower. And that's the right time to harvest it. So we're going to use a machete, we're going to cut the plant from the base from the very base and then we're gonna cut the plant again and the base of the leaves so usually we're going to be careful with but we must be careful with the base of the leaves especially this part because there are some little spikes on the base of those leaves the shuriken is more like a cactus so just let me show you uh, oh, yeah. part of those uh, some of those spikes um, <laughs> well uh, what do you know about, about coffee? it's nice it's nice? yeah it's good <laughs> Coffee, is good. What else? You cut the leaves, only the younger leaves or the older one? Actually, we usually cut the plant from the base every eight years in order to let it grow again. The plant doesn't oh, it makes fruits and all branches. So, and also the plant grows like two meters and a half, even more in shade. So Costa Ricans, we're not too tall. And sometimes very difficult to raise the fruits, especially at the top. So now we'll become more predictive. So we'll produce more coffee in that way. Uh, there are two different varieties. There is Arabica and Robusta. Arabica is original from Ethiopia, Robusta original from the Republic of Congo. Here in Costa Rica, as a small country, we cannot compete with the big producers of coffee as Brazil, Vietnam, Colombia in quantity. We just try to compete in quality. So since 1988, we we're just allowed to produce Arabica, um, well, Arabica varieties, and export premium and first quality beans. The plant produces three different qualities. But second quality beans are just the ones that we just keep for the locals. We're not allowed to export it in order to compete in quality. Well, we'll sell some, we're going to sell some of those second quality, second quality beans to Starbucks. Sometimes, just don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, actually there are three different qualities in the plant. But, well, the process, at least here in Costa Rica, we just call it Rabbit It's too slow. Uh, the projected life of the plant, of each plant, is 25 years. And it will produce coffee, well, all year long you will see green fruits. You can see some green ones now, and also red fruits. The red one is the one that you can harvest. We're going to harvest it manually. Here in Costa Rica, the coffee is all hand-picked. So we're going to, well, we'll show you later on how we harvest it with the basket. But you can pick out the red fruits. I will actually do it with one here. And all you have to do then is just uh, take the red shell off. You can just twist a little bit, and the seeds pop up easily. So that's the way you can take the red shell off, right? All made by machine, not by hand. But yeah, there is actually one single bin here. This is something that we consider premium coffee. Actually, the difference in the quality is just affected by the number of bins or seeds inside of the fruit. One single bin is something that we call peaberry coffee. It's the top quality because... <laughs> well, let me... This right here, this is premium quality bin. Round shaped seeds, flat. Or it helps with first quality, that's the way you can recognize it. And let me show you some of the second quality beans, the one that looks kind of triangular. So, actually, the drying process, well, usually it's just made uh, by sunlight, like, actually faster than greenhouses. But here in Monte Verde, we don't know uh, when it's going to rain, so that's why we just give the coffee, uh, which is right here. So, coffee actually uh, has many layers, shells. 
In the process, we're going to take the red cell off, wash the seeds quickly, and then, well, less than two days because of the fermentation, and then without any red cell or sugars of the sap, you can let it dry it out to at least three weeks, and then you can process the coffee here in greenhouses, take another shell off, something that we call parchment shell. This is the way that the second quality coffee bean uh, looks like, kind of triangular, so there were three seeds inside it. So you can pick up one of those seeds, mm -hmm. and you can try to peel it or take its shell off. It's really easy now, you can crash a little bit, and the parchment shell, it gets broken, so it's quite easy to, to take that shell off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so inside of the coffee bean, there is something we call, or something we call a uh, green bean. The green bean has another shell, actually the silver skin. The silver skin is very difficult to take off, at least the head. Well, this the whole process is made by machines now, but yeah, there's more coffee. Uh, at the end of the year, especially at the, at the end of the year here in Cotin Monteverde, uh, we're gonna start to see red spreads in the plants. They have the right time to harvest it. So as I told you, we're going to harvest just the red spreads that is ripe. There are also some green spreads. All year long, you will see uh, green spreads. So, well, bloom season is in May, May, and then usually you have to wait eight months, and that's the time to take for each spread or flower to become a spread and be ready to be harvested. So all the machines are just in order from the first stage of the process. They basically take the red to off, wash the seeds. This machine, the small one that is right here, is something that we call in Espanol, in Spanish, chacarora, it's just a camino. This is the way we take the red to off and wash it. The next machine is going to take the plushing off. But the coffee from here first goes directly into the greenhouses for at least three weeks. Then uh, the coffee actually is just being processed by the second third machine, sorry, the one that takes the plushing off. Storage machines, the next two machines actually are going to store coffee by size and quality. And the yellow one is the roasting machine, the last part of the process. All of the coffee that we sell here on uh, the farm is actually coming up and having roasted. So you can also sell green coffee. Well, especially to other countries, especially for exportation. Most of the countries are going to export their coffee, not roast, the customer can roast by sell. And that's actually much easier and better for us. Uh, okay. Yes, because. Yeah, it's broken. Exactly. Let me see, there is another one somewhere out there. Better. Have you ever tried before like this? Raw shuriken? I'm just gonna peel it and cut it in small pieces. It's so tasty. All you have to do is just shred it. Don't swallow the fiber. Yeah. Very important. It's delicious. You like it? <laughs> People eat first time sugar cane. Okay, let's go over here. Okay. Mm. 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 They're not going to walk because you are right there. So you have to step a little bit more back. Yeah. Careful. That actually is going to work almost. Yeah, it's uh, well, these are natural labor symbols. A lot of people use this. Oh, now I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm
dit erg lullig aan. Oh, dat is een beetje een beetje een beetje een beetje een It's good. It's better than cafe. It makes happy. Yeah, dopamine actually yes. you know, is good to make you happy. It's one of the reasons why people love chocolates. Uh, do you know where it's original from? Brazil? Brazil. Yeah. The scientific name is Tabroma Cacao. Teos means God in Greek, Broma means food. It was the food of the gods, at least for the Aztecs. In their culture, they said that one of the gods gave the cocoa to them as a gift. They used some of the devices as currency, so people say that the money doesn't grow in trees. It does. Well, mm -hmm. at least for the Aztecs. Um, well, they use some of the dry seeds currency and some of the fermented ones in order to make a special drink for rituals. So they used to mix some of those uh, fermented seeds with some water, spices, and um, yeah, it was a special drink just for special ceremonies. So at least now we still fermented the cocoa beans, but it's just in order to make chocolate. So the fermentation process, the cocoa beans are going to get stronger notes, uh, chocolate notes. If you don't ferment the cocoa, it will not taste like chocolate at the end. That's simple. So have you ever tried or tasted before the raw cocoa seeds? No. no. Not the dry ones, actually the, the fresh one, the white pulp. No. Yeah. I tasted it in Colombia a little bit. Yeah, actually the seed is covered by a white pulp and tastes really, really good. It's kind of citric and sweet. It doesn't taste like cocoa. But yeah, the thing is that, um, well, the next one just was one of the first ones who brought cocoa to Spain and then to Africa. That's why a lot of countries are producing cocoa in Africa. But yeah, and cocoa It's opening. We're going to taste it in a minute. But actually, uh, all we have to do is just suck on the seed. Don't bite it. Don't swallow it because. Uh, Can take one? Well, in a minute. Not really. Not yet. Actually, if you want to take a photo, this is the moment. Then we're going to mm -hmm. try it. But yeah, just a white pulp. The one that is um, sweet and pretty. So it's really good. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else want to take a photo? <laughs> so, well, I'm just gonna use this grind and something we call metate in order to grind it and mix it at the same time. So, this will be dark chocolate at the end. Butter that we never extract, so butter, cocoa, and sugar. And then you can add some milk in order to turn uh, this into milk chocolate. You can pass that little container around. That's cocoa butter. Okay. Yeah, you can actually take a look at the butter. Because of the friction, but now it's kind of more solid, so that's... The store is it melts very easily? Tastes better. Yeah. 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 way to extract the juice. Uh, well, this is the traditional one, and now we'll see this one. I want to show you this other tapicia, but be careful with the gears, so be careful. Uh, step back a little bit and make a big circle around. Also, this water is inspired by the water wheel instead of oxygen. 
Oh, that's for sugar to make sugar. Mm -hmm. You just boil it. Mm -hmm. No. So that's the first step, and then the second step. No, that's water. Ah, that's that water. You add it. No, you get the juice over here to the fire. Mm -hmm. You put fire, and it gets like crumb. Oh, so this is the first. Yeah, it looks like this. Okay. Oh, and that's the sugar. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a sugar? Brown sugar. Wow. That's a tam, shall we not Okay, Sugar, 